Well, for one, the the program itself has been going for forever. I mean, mm-hmm. for 50 years or so, mm-hmm. you know, with his mom starting it. And there is a reputation of the program that is talked about amongst parents. Yes. So there's no advertising done. Oh, now that wow. we, there's no advertising ever that's ever been done. Now that we really? have social media, and you guys sell out your classes. The, our classes fill up, yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it's all word of mouth we and do reputation. Have a now that we do, mm-hmm. we have a website, mm-hmm. but that's not advertising. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. <laughs> you know, we've got social media, mm-hmm. um, but other than that, there's no advertising platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's all word of mouth, and it's all reputation, and this is word of mouth and reputation that has been built over you know decades Mm -hmm. and so the parents will be maybe here's a good example you'll have a parent at a pool with their kids who've come through the Sweetman program and you'll have a parent with their kids who haven't and they're looking and they're watching and they're seeing this family and these children and they're amazed at their ability and their comfort in the water yes and so they'll initiate a conversation wow, your kids are amazing. Where did they learn, you know, to swim? Oh, well, you know, our kids have all gone to Sweetman Swimmers. So, you know, and then it's like, you know, well, it may have been tough, but it was worth it. Yes. You know, so it's it's all word of mouth, and it's all kind of a reputation-based thing. And so yes. you're thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to enroll in this program, and I've heard all these crazy things about it, you know. and But they get there, and they realize – wow, they love these kids so much and they're teaching my child first and foremost how to survive in the water. Yes. You know, and so then they see it firsthand. But like Brendan said, we sit with them for an hour the first day of class Mm -hmm. and and we talk to them and we answer questions and we kind of give them an idea of what they can expect. Yes. So you guys, the, the, um, it seems to me you have a system, you have a process. You're there to train that child, first of all, to keep them safe. And second, to learn how to swim and how to enjoy that. And so you have a purpose and a goal. And that purpose is above just the comfort in the moment of the child, correct? Because if the goal is the comfort of the child, Mm -hmm. now that child is walking across the parking lot. It's all about that child. In the supermarket, it's all about that child. And it's just whatever makes them comfortable. But that's not necessarily what's good for the child. That's right. So with you guys, what really impressed me um, is I saw this past summer we sent uh, Lincoln Jackson, Ava Jericho. We sent our, well, I guess at the time it was all of the kids that we had. <laughs> we have had a fifth one since then. Congratulations. Uh, that's going to that's gonna do it for the Lap family. Um, <laughs> You're not but, Catholic, are you? <laughs> no, we're not. So I've taken measures. Um, <laughs> but um, so at the time, Jericho was our youngest, and he was pr- right around two, a little less than two years old. And here is... Jericho, who, you know, I mean, he he's young, you know, and he's somewhat obedient some of the time, but he's still young. Mm-hmm. Okay, if we're at a swimming pool, he doesn't swit, sit by the side of the swimming pool and just sit there with kind of his hands in his lap, watching and observing. He's at your class, probably day three, sitting by the pool <laughs> like a stone, just <laughs> observing. And next to him is another 18 month or 24 20, month old child. They're just both sitting there just looking. How does that, how does that happen? That's got nothing to do with swimming. <laughs> how does that happen? Being brave to jump off the cliff with the child and actually say, this is what we expect. And at a very, very young age, even at one year old, at two years old, they understand that. Of course, you're going to speak to a toddler different from a baby and a, and an older child different from a, the, the two previous. So mm-hmm. we, want to get them mesmerized we want all ages to be in one class so they all have the ability to learn from the other Mm. because i guarantee you more in our classes the older ones are learning from the younger ones Mm. Mm -hmm. so that's the way and so how how do we do that it's through it's through an energy it's through an energy which is bigger than us, which started way back in New Zealand, Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud, when my mother was young. And all these philosophies of parenting, of, of our culture there, have come over into, uh, into uh, uh, come to America when my parents came here and were adopted and really entrenched not only in us as children, 
but in, in our sw swim program. So mm. there's a lot more happening than just a child learning how to swim. Yes. yes. That, 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 that is something, if you could copyright something, it would be that. But you can't. And yeah. I can't teach that. Yeah. I can't. I, it's very, very difficult to teach that to uh, if I wanted to go out and teach the world. It would be something that they, it, I think they could learn it depending on where they come from, the way they have been raised as a, uh, as a child, mm -hmm. to be able to do the best they can to adopt those ideas. But it's, um, mm -hmm. we, we definitely have an energy, and it's all pervading, and it's, it's at times difficult to, uh, to uh, be able to see, uh, to see it clearly. But mm -hmm. it all comes around. And we want our parents to be in our swim program long enough to feel that palpable energy which is around our pool and what we're help, hopefully helping their children to adopt in their life. Okay. Okay. So, um, so in the case of a two-year-old that on a normal day, he's not just sitting by the pool, but he's running around the pool and the parents are having to go get him and drag him back and say, don't run at the pool. And 30 seconds later, he's running at the pool again. And um, that type of child which is a lot of two-year-olds just in their natural habitat. Sure. Again, um, I was seeing kids sitting by the side of your pool that I assume don't normally just sit by pools. Um, are you having some kind of a, um, what is the force that's causing that to happen? Like <laughs> day one, are they just, are they just magic. realizing, yeah, what's the magic here? Are they just realizing that you mean business when you say sit there or are you providing some kind of positive or negative reinforcement What's causing that behavior, that good behavior in your class? I think it's a combination of things. Yeah, and the, yeah. And the, and the, greatest, the greatest thing we have here, uh, not to over-talk no. you, but the greatest thing we have here is direct experience. If you are constantly putting your child into water wings, which we think yeah. have actually played part in a lot of children drowning in, mm. in this country and in the world, Water wings, you, puddle jumpers, any type of flotation. Oh, you said water flotation. wings. Water wings. Oh, yeah. okay. If you puddle put jumpers. a child okay, in, yeah. in water wings, and you're constantly, you're, our kids are very programmable. Okay. If you're programming your child to never go by water, yes. do not go by water unless yes. you have these uh, toys on, have the, well, these flotation devices on, Yes. your child is going to become used to that type of behavior if you... If, if like we have two and three and four year olds, there's no program. I guarantee you, I say this humbly in this world, if a two and three year old decides to not listen to us mm -hmm. and we don't say anything, we back back and we let that child do what he's going to do. And he comes and he jumps in the water. Mm. That is his greatest teacher. Yeah. That's teaching Direct him experience. not yeah. to put his hand on the stove. This is yes. hot. Mm -hmm. Continuing to keep him away from that is not the answer. And mm. you don't have to be able to read a book or novel or understand what articulately what your mother and father are saying. Mm -hmm. But you understand that without words. It goes beyond words. And that is the hidden medicine, the hidden magic. Mm. That is that, that, that force that you speak of. Mm -hmm. 